Does this thing work? This is the Peak Boredom Podcast. Three, two, one. Okay lah. Hi guys, welcome to the Peak Boredom Podcast. Ooh. And oh, okay. <laughs> and today I have a very special guest, and his name is Stanley. Hopefully, you guys can stand him. Um, he's. <laughs> 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 Yo, uh, he's Goldie. He's my friend who's an animator, and he's from Scat. And we meet in the in in a very weird way. We met through another friend named Jessa, and we'll show her picture right here later. Wow, and you're so really Stanley. calling her out. <laughs> yeah, of course. Oh, okay. She deserves it. <laughs> she deserves and it. So Stan, you can go introduce yourself. Okay, thanks for that wonderful introduction, Lauren. <laughs> uh, hi guys, my name is Stanley, and I'm currently uh, an animation student at SCAD, which is in Savannah, uh, Georgia. And I'm currently in my junior year, and I'm hoping um, to be working in a feature film industry in an animation studio once I graduate. Thank you. So... <laughs> If okay. there's something you know about me is I love cartoons, animation, and films, and all that related. So I'm really happy to get you, and to know that you're working with Lauren with a really good short that's about Indonesia. So we could start with the first question, Inga. <laughs> yeah, let's start with the first question then. What inspired you to become an animator? So definitely when I'm like. Like you guys know, when we were all like kids, we watched like cartoons and stuff. But when I was younger, I didn't really like pay attention into like you know or have anything to do with like I want to be an animator or anything. So it's not like a long like like a long life dream for me. Um, but one day when I was like, um, I think it's some somewhere between like junior high school, um, I watched this like behind the scenes video on how like. Um, they actually make Pixar movies, which is the 3D animation, and like that video blows my mind. And ever since then, I'm be like uh, appreciate the moving art, the moving picture art form more. And uh, I started learning slowly about what animation is and how they actually make it. And then I decided to pursue my dream as becoming an animator. Wow! Are there any specific movies that? really like inspire you now? Uh, my all-time favorite movie is still Up by Disney and Pixar. I think it's because from all like aspects, uh, I feel like the story is just amazing. Like it can touch a lot of people's heart. And as well as from the technical quality, I guess it's not, it's probably not Pixar's best animation wise, but uh, I really like the story and like the characters itself. They're really, I guess, relatable and feels real. And that's what I hope to like bring to my animation as well, like to be able to like reflect it, like people's lives, and they can like relate to the movies. I think that's really cool. So tell us a bit about the project that you and Lauren are working on. Okay. <laughs> so yes. Yeah. So this is actually this project was actually a bit random to start with. So long story short, a couple, not a couple, like a few people from my school, SCAD, and one other person that I met online from Instagram. He's a character modeler or sculptor from uh, Denmark. We got together and just like, you know what, we want to make a short film. And it's not for anyone's uh, like thesis film or uh, it's not for their like graduation film. It's literally just a side collaboration project that we just do it for fun. And throughout the time, it suddenly like the project grew bigger and bigger and we have uh, more people to help. And Lauren was one of the people that we bring in uh, in the middle of the project, and we're so grateful for that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, keep, so keep going, keep going with the uh, Lauren. Lauren went amazing. in, and you're grateful. How grateful? Okay, okay. No, I think the grateful part is <laughs> enough here. <laughs> I'm grateful. Full stop. <laughs> but yeah, like what Lauren mentioned, um, Jessa, which is. Um, she was my senior when I studied in Singapore for my high school. Yeah, Jessa. Um, yeah, Jessa is now Lawrence. Yeah, she's she's like, my friend in mm-hmm. uh, Hong Kong Baptist U. So like, we went to the same uni and we became close because, um, yeah, 
international students association so like we became close and then one day she was like uh, you know, I have a friend, and his name—he's—he's he's so talented in animate in oh animation, <laughs> and no, like, um, <laughs> I I can connect both of you, like if you guys want to collaborate. And then she she contacted Stanley, and then suddenly when I woke up one day, Stanley, I I saw a DM from Stanley. Hey, I heard from Jessa <laughs> that you're a music composer. Was it really that? <laughs> yeah, I think I think it was like some it it was a long paragraph. That's what I remember. It was yeah. Oh, okay. Like, I'm glad she said okay, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean to sound like creepy or anything. I mean, like... <laughs> <laughs> it was so spontaneous. But I think it was, though, quality. yeah. It's a quality, though, that I think a lot of um, animators, musicians, and like just art people in general, they should, they should quite have that spontaneous quality, I think. I agree. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Club, like... Collaboration is a very spontaneous thing. This, this this whole podcast is very spontaneous, so yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> then speaking of collaboration, can you bring us through the steps of like what are the steps in making an animation, like from scratch to end? Like what are the basic steps? Okay, well, that's a long um, process, like animation by itself. But in a way, even though we have like different animation types like we have stop motion 2d and 3d um they all generally follow the similar pipeline i would say so first what you need from an animation is obviously story like an idea or like a concept and i think like after you got that realized you can write it in a screenplay to make it like a script so it's like um more translatable to other people instead of just having the idea in your head and then the artist would like translate that written words into like storyboards. So like um, that's when they use like their creativity to interpret whatever's written and like show it in visual form. And after that storyboard, um, usually we go to animatic stage, which is basically turning those storyboards, which is just like still drawings and put them in a sequence in a video format. And so that's when they, um, like first fully view the animation in the very rough form. I hope that's understandable. Um, and then the reason they use like animatic and storyboards before actually animating, it's um, it's cheaper if you wanna have like story changes or any change that has to do with like the animation. When they change it in the animatic, it's like, it doesn't really take much time. And, like in contrast to like when you change stuff during the animation stage because animation like takes a a long long while <laughs> so after that animatic stage is done that's when you go like through like the production what i was describing just now was like the pre-production yeah after that we have like character designs environments and everything set then we go to the animation stage which as i mentioned like different types have different you know stop motion has different ways with 3d and different with 2D. But basically they all like follow that pipeline. And then it's like post-production where music and like Lawrence people come in to make Lawrence everything. <laughs> I say your people, your you know come your entity. Oh yo <laughs> and Lauren Lauren TM. Post production Lauren. comes in later. Yes. Sort of like the tail. But then let's go on to a movie that is one of is it Pixar's latest masterpieces, Coco. Now, the, I watched the behind the scenes of Coco and it's amazing, like the research that they put into it. But one of the things that amazed me and I never really thought about it was the difference between artists and musicians. And one of the scenes that they said the hardest to animate was in one of the beginning scenes where Miguel decided to start playing the guitar and then he did the finger motions and they said that that was very difficult conceptualizing and actually doing. So how do you go about that process? Like, is it musician first or artist first? Um, yeah, I'm glad you brought up like Coco as an example. That's like a <laughs> really good movie, I agree. Yeah, I Dude, definitely, yeah, and this... I cried at the first scene. 
the first scene? Yeah, because like you know right all the lights. First scene. Oh, the light. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. At the end. You know when it came in, it was all like the light <laughs> store, the lights. They were telling the story through the lights already. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Isn't it like the cutouts? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, cutout? the yeah. cutouts. Yeah. And then they show like the the land of the dead. Oh yeah. And what happened yeah. to you at the end? If you cried at the first scene? Oh, you don't want to know, but I cried. <laughs> Uh, and then I brought my friend and she's like, why are you already crying? <laughs> I mean, it's really good though, I agree. It is, it is a really good movie. And the music is really nice too, so. Yeah. Yesterday we actually talked to someone and I asked him the first time watching Coco. He was like, yeah, did you cry? And he's just like, no comment. <laughs> uh, there shouldn't be a, a shame for a guy to cry. But like, Coco... Yeah, I think I teared up like at the end, like with the the grandma scene. That's like the great yeah. grandma, like really that, cool. that, that was like, this murder scene, <laughs> bro. Yeah. Pixar just yeah. Pixar is really good at making people cry. I the cried. Music. In I think the music is yeah. Yeah, music yeah, but is just like, the music is so like it didn't have to be grand. It's just like a grandma scene. I mean, like yeah, exactly. Like I mean, I I nearly cried when it's up. Like, oh, you know, yes. oh yeah, the first scenes of Up. Da, 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 the part. Oh my like gosh, that is just da, 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 da. that's just four notes repeated all over again, but like different instruments all the time. And for some reason, it just it's it's like what one minute of one minute without any dialogue, and it's so powerful. I feel like that's very powerful. We can talk about storytelling, um, storytelling without music and dialogue later, I guess. But let's go on to that question on like that one scene in Coco where they did the musician, like they collaborated with musicians. How do you go about making that kind of scene? Okay, I can answer from my point of view first and then Lauren can jump in later. To, <laughs> um, so what I like, my understanding is it really depends on what scene, like if the question is in terms of this musician goes first or animators it like depends on like what type of like shot like um what you mentioned like the coco playing finger style guitar um i think that should be like music comes first and then the animators um animate according to like what they hear it's similar to like how um voice actors record their voices first before animators like animate but um if we're talking just about like in general like um adding soundtracks and like uh what do you call it soundscapes or everything um i think like animators yeah sound design and soundscape yeah it's the same thing yeah like in terms of like adding like sound effects on designs and everything i think musician would come after animators but what do you think lauren (laughs) (laughs) um yeah i actually agree with stanley so like I've never um, for, have a first-hand experience of working with an animation that's a musical where the characters sing and all because in our animation project like uh, Kagati, um, there's no dialogue so music comes after. Uh, so I think for animations where you just need a soundtrack then music will come after. Uh, the animators did all the work so it's totally like final 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 step in the post-production. But in terms of like Frozen or like, you know, Frozen where the characters sing or Coco, finger style guitar and everything. I think the musician should come first, but then they should have frequent, like regular frequent, probably 24 seven communication with the animator because they have to teach the animator. Okay, if you sing uh, their breathing, you should animate their breathing like this. You should animate their finger style like this. Um, So it's really detailed work, but yeah, I think in that case, sometimes the musician and the animator can go hand in hand. So maybe the musician finish half of the song and then the animator just do half of it first. Uh, it can come hand in hand. It can come like musician goes first and then animators. Yeah, I, I would say that's that's the process. Yeah, I'm I thinking guess. about like movies where they really want the the, the like the vibe of the song. Um, it's really clear, like in Spider Verse, um, when they when Miles was like testing his powers, they really wanted that song to like play within whatever he was feeling and all that. There's a lot of movies where they actually write the song into the 
movie or animation. Um, Give us an example. I was thinking of Baby Driver. Um, you guys oh. have you guys ever watched Baby Driver? No. It's not an animation, no. but <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it's well, a masterpiece. It is. What was interesting in that movie is is the songs were written into the into the movie. So they were thinking about the beats and like the the vibe, the sound, and like how it plays in the visual aspect. There was an animation who did that too, but it does, it can't, I can't. Are you talking right now? Are you talking about rhythm cutting? So like they can cut the movie to the music. They're actually um following the music. That is it the beginning scene? Like yes. with all the like the lyrics like on the walls and stuff like that. That too, and then like when they were doing the car chase scene, car chase, they actually follow the song. So when he turns, it's like a stop. When when uh, like it's all that there. There was a few animations that did that too, where they like integrated like the feeling of the song into the. Obviously, in there you have to pick up the song you um, actually want to be in the animation. But there, I think that plays in with a lot of. Um, animation where you know you have the a very like traditional animation. I'm thinking about like Avatar. I think they were really, really, really like Avatar: Legend of Aang. They were really um, careful with what kind of sounds they put in. They were very, very strategic. Yeah, they managed to put the ending theme and then integrate it into the last season right of the show mm, yeah and so when that song came out everyone was like oh no i know this song like <laughs> we've been spending the past two seasons listening to it yeah it just reminds me of when we worked on our song theme for our independence day that was basically the same thing right like we are trying to put in our culture inside the song um you know what's interesting how do you guys like communicate what you want because obviously like music is so different from like animation and like putting ideas onto like a physical form is already difficult enough then how do you do it between art forms because like i know we had, uh, we had like difficulties so you're like oh we wanted more like suling <laughs> and then stuff and then, well, it's like oh okay i mean uh, stan you can go first yeah you can go Oh, uh, um, I guess like the keyword is like choreography. Like as long as you guys like, like can make sure like the chore choreographed it like well, and like you guys have a solid like vision of like what you wanted. Um, like for example, like me and Lauren, we it's like definitely like a go back and forth. It, like it's not just like she'll yeah. do it everything first and then I'll do the rest. We like communicate like um like I want the action like this happening at around this time, you know, and and then she will like give her input like what like you know, if we need to shift around. I mean we haven't really done that yet, but I figured that's what probably what we'll do. So like, I think yeah. It's like he, he gave me like when we were starting out. So like it's still the I think you you haven't even finished the animatic. Mm. So, I don't think so. Um yeah, he gave me the shot list, which I read. I read the okay. shot list. <laughs> <laughs> My employers never read anything I give. <laughs> I mean shot list is important. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So so he gave me the shot list where he just gave me a rough idea like okay I, I think I want this sound I think I want that sound blah 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 he wrote it all for each scene and then I'll be like I'll just keep it to myself first I, I usually I don't really comment until like the middle then I'll be like, I, I don't I don't sure. agree with yeah. you this 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 yeah. like that, uh, <laughs> And then for me, I make the main theme first. Like once I grasp the idea, I make the main theme first. So if you check out the Kagati .film Instagram <laughs> at Kagati .film Instagram, guys, <laughs> there's the main link, theme. Link under the here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll 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 put it here. Like Kagat, we'll, Kagati we'll talk film. about yeah. it more too in the future. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, I made I made the main theme first, 
and then I just give it to Stanley. Like, do you think this might fit your 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 whole concept? And then Did you guys talk you... about like um, basis, like oh, it it has to sound like a bit hopeful or sad or yes, of course. So we had a call that's in the about shot that. list. Yeah, okay. that, that's in the shot list. That's also and in we the had shot a call list? about that. Dang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, like man. yeah, that's so that's detailed. Specific. Yeah, he's very detailed actually. So like, he told me like, okay, I want this feeling, I want this Disney vibe and all, and then I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah, but music comes later after sound. I I usually do sound first and then music because sound gives depth to the animation, and it will help me to direct the music. So sound is where the real thing. Like I had a. We had like what, almost two hour call, <laughs> oh, on like, <laughs> on like textures and yeah. all, and then I was like just discussing it with Stanley, and then he's just like, okay, we we went through like almost every scene, like actually no the every call. scene, yeah, yeah the call, <laughs> the the almost two hour call, just about sound, the call, the call, call. the call. <laughs> so of course it's it's yeah. like a, it's it's a very. Um, it's frequent communication is definitely needed, even even when the animation is not fully done yet. Were there like any animation you were inspired of, like um, sound and song base? Oh, you know what? Um, let's go back to the question that we were dealing with just like just earlier. Mm -hmm. What are some like animations that don't have vocals or any words in them? that really inspire you and like really catch your eye. I can start first. One of my favorite movies, <laughs> animation movies, is How to Train Your Dragon. And so my favorite scene is probably that scene where Hiccup becomes friends with Toothless and there were no words, like even though the whole movie had words, there were no words at all, but then they had music and then they had the foley and they had the actual scene well directed and that was such a good scene. Right. No, I guess what I can think of right now is um, I just recently watched this short. It's called Tokri. Um, it's by an Indian stop motion studio, Ixaurus. I can tell you guys know later. But like the whole sound design, that's also uh, there's no dialogue in that short, and it's stop motion, so it looks like really pretty. And the sound design, they actually uh, like record. I just love the the keyword. I guess is like authenticity. Like they don't they don't like only record in studio and like artificial sounds or something like that. But they actually go like outside the street and like record real life, you know, environment. And at one point, um, for their like uh, flutist, is that what you call people who play flute? Um, flutist. They actually um like approach this like uh. I don't know what they call it, but it's like a flute, like soling or like recorder, like like the very traditional type. And so this guy who like sells them, they, he's like the flute seller. They approach him and he, he like ask him to like play this tune and they record it like on the spot. And I feel like just those kind of like authenticity level that could like translate really well into a short and bring the emotion really well. So I guess that's my example. This is Stanley indirectly telling me. Lauren. What? Oh. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Did they pay the guy? <laughs> Did, Did they, they pay the guy? guy? Yeah. They should. I'm not sure, but I think pretty sure they should. A bit, yeah. At least a bit they should. It's Probably credit him so. though, yeah. I mean, maybe. Or, yeah, credit I don't know. him. Yeah, <laughs> they put it in like a behind the scene uh, production process, that's why I know. But. For me, my favorite um, no no dialogue animation with really great music is up, just up, like it's the whole music. thing. No, no, that that one, that that scene where it's Carl and Ellie. Oh, the, the opening, montage. the opening. Yeah, just that, just where they're about their married life. It's it's the best. I'm, I'm gonna cheat. <laughs> Uh, cause like, it's not working right now. Obviously, Spider Verse when um is 
it's not like unsound, but I think spoiler alert, nobody watched it yet, which he should. When he was taking a leap of faith, um, I think the animation with the style of comics and like the song really fit in. They were really careful in putting in like him living the comic book life, I guess, but also being himself. I mean, that scene brings me to tears all the time. I'm such a tear jerk. And, um, but like the first time I've seen like music being very important to animation is in Gravity Falls, they, the creator and the two voice actors and the sound sound editor, sound engineer, they did like a live open talk of like the first episode. And when they were like reading the, the scene, I can hear the sound editor like playing in his piano that like the the sound so they it's kind of like mystery vibe and like very like dun, 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 dun. I thought that was really cool on um, the way it really fit in with like the the animation and the style he wanted um that's really the first time I'm like oh so- sound is very important <laughs> It's ironic, no, not ironic. I mean, sound is important, but it's so important to the point where I told this to Stanley, like, if the audience can say your sound design is good, that's probably not a good thing (laughs) because it's not supposed to be not noticeable. It's supposed to be believable, but not noticeable. So that's the tricky thing about sound. How do you make it good, but not noticeable? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, such I a good th- like point. I think that when I was making a short in my little little university, um, that was the first thing she said to me too. Like, um, if there's something that is an advice, it is that if if there's one wrong like sound and weird foley in your in your movie, then it's all wrong. <laughs> it's like, ah! <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember like we so there is a scene where like the knife falls I guess and long story short and then but then we only had a foley that sounds like a, like a pen was falling <laughs> and then I played it and she's like why does the knife sound like it's a pen and I was like no <laughs> she's so right to it difficult one right like when you're talking about sound design and how noticeable it is, are you talking about the general audience or people with a trained ear? Because people at home probably cannot help but notice these kind of things. I know, I know I for one, like when I watch a movie, for me, the sound design is very noticeable, like whether it's good or not. Like Wonder Woman, when when Hans Zimmer, was it Hans Zimmer? No, we're going to make this mistake again. No, no, no. Not but Hans- he, he is doing the second one, so you're not wrong. <laughs> Um, whoever did the theme song for Wonder Woman, that was very noticeably good. Like how they played around with it, and like how they did the reprise. Is it that's how it's said? Um, movie like How to Train Your Dragon reprise, like how good it is, or even with Avatar: Legend of Korra, when we watch Jeremy Zuckerman's the score that Jeremy Zuckerman does is really really good. Yeah, he's like a normal avatar to novel, the first one. For me, it's like, sometimes it can be a... I mean, I really like having really sharp ears. <laughs> but sometimes it can be like, if I just want to enjoy the movie, sometimes it can really get get in the way. Because sometimes it's just like, ah, what is that? I guess you mean like the general yeah, audience, like, you know? Like, if, if the general yeah, audience... Yeah, for the general audience, as long as... For a good sound designer would know how to make something believable. So it might, like, if for example, just now the, the example that you said, like it's a knife falling, you use a pen. It doesn't matter as long as it's believable. It doesn't have to be a knife sound, but if you, you can't make it believable, then you you, you fail. <laughs> That's it. it the, the point is make the animation come to life by making the sound believable. That's it. But of course, for sound designers, they, they would pick out even like the tiniest, tiniest mistake. But 
that doesn't matter because 90% of your audience is the general the general public who probably don't have like supersonic ears like or the the sensitivity of a sound designer <laughs> so yeah i mean i think that's the same for animators right sometimes yeah when you see i was about to say that movie. yeah that like relates so much with animation and everything like sometimes you get you know like uh we're afraid that like our animation is like not good enough or like not detailed enough but at the same time we have to know like when to stop and not to be like too perfectionist so it's like like what you said like 90% of these people will probably don't realize that it's it's just that we're like you know but but I yes I mean yeah you guys have stared at it longer than anyone will ever have yeah i think that's like a curse and a blessing like the fact that we're like exactly. have these like trained <laughs> eyes and ears yeah yeah it's like, like a when curse we watch a movie blessing. yeah it's it's like both literally like sometimes i, I wish i'm just like Uh, stop analyzing stuff and just like enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. I want analyze the panning and the yeah, yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. Everything. It's like the IB curse when you're like, they're like saying a metaphor, right? And all the kids are like, "Oh, this is so wonderful!" And we're like, oh, uh, she's, "She's gonna die." <laughs> uh, yeah, you just know you you like analyze the storyline, the plot, like the plot twist. You like see it a mile away, but like, uh, oh, yeah, you're not gonna enjoy it, man. There's a movie I was like this, this girl's a ghost and she was and I was like no <laughs> like, I figured out in 5 minutes This is my problem and Sometimes I can like turn off my analytic skills and uh, like analytic like brain and like just like watch it and enjoy it but that's like sometimes though very rare Really like, I curse the IB curse is real This happened with um I was telling Mars this today when I watched Tangled Um, you know that song when they said like, and at last I see the light. I'm like, oh my goodness, they're dead. <laughs> they're they're on they're on a boat. They're crossing a river, and they saw the light. I'm like, they're dying. <laughs> and my oh. friend had to tell me, Le Petit Prince as a book is already difficult enough because everyone sees a different meaning from Le Petit Prince. Oh yeah, movie, yeah. The movie, the movie just made it real, and I'm just stuck. I had a headache after watching it because I'm like, there's too much symbolism, and I don't know which direction it's supposed to go. I think that's why the new animation is interesting because they're picking a side for the story, like it's on the point of a girl or something, which brings us back to storytelling. Uh, it's actually interesting that we talk about like different stories that inspires us. Especially with your short read, it's like a type of story you want to tell. Going forward, as like a creative person, what are the types of stories you want to tell? Something you want, or something you, something you've or like thought about for a long time. Because like for me, the types of stories I want to tell, whatever my work will be, is like the story of you know the minorities, the. The ones we never see in the media, um, I think they are super important. This is why I like stories like Spider Verse, like What a Latina Afro Kid, or stories like Wow. I don't like stories like I don't know what for you guys, but these are so important to me. Or the fact that we don't have a Southeast Asian princess now until now kind of bothers me. <laughs> well, what about you guys? Who, who's a Southeast Asian princess? Raya. Raya the. The Last Dragon. That's Southeast Asian. Yeah. So yeah. Well, it is inspired by like, like a mush of Southeast Asian stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like Indone- Indonesian, Indonesian, uh, Viet, uh, Indonesian, Viet, Thailand. Thailand, and there's one more I can't remember. Wow. <laughs> Those are four very, very distinct countries. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? You start somewhere. So yeah, that's true. I agree. I mean, for well, as a musician, like the only stories that I tell is emphasizing whatever the story that the director wants to tell. So in my case, I'm going to emphasize whatever story Stanley wants to tell to the audience. So Stanley, what Stanley, Stanley take it away. What do you? <laughs> <laughs> what are the stories you want to stab? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here's the Stanley jokes. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. It's actually a really interesting question, and I really like your answer, by the way. Like, um, and in a way, I do, I do want to like 
not only like for minorities, I would say like um, I guess the word is like exposing, exposing something that like uh, not a lot of people like know. And for starters, I one of the things that I really want to tell people through my stories is um, like our culture, like Indonesian specifically. Oh yeah, man. I love it. Like yeah, just anyhow possible, just like in integrated in my work, right. like. Yeah, like for example, like um, Amanda is doing this too. Like she, oh yeah, we never mind. <laughs> okay. So Amanda's Amanda is his co-director in the yeah animation. We will talk about in the future. All right, but yeah. Anyway, like some of my friends are also doing this. Like how we try to integrate like our culture in our schoolwork because like why not? You know, yeah. like yeah, I put like an Indomie, <laughs> like an Indomie in one of my animation, <laughs> but. I as simple I as that. that. Yeah. <laughs> <See> that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like for starters. Oh, yeah. Um, but definitely, yeah. Like one of the things is exposing like our own culture. But at the same time, I want to tell stories that like essentially resonate to people, and it doesn't have to be like in such a big magnitude, like change their lives or anything. You know, um, as simple as like. Like for instance, like one person after watching my movie, hopefully be like, "Oh, I haven't called my grandparents for a while. Let me call them." Or you know, like just like very small things that touches people. I think that'd be great, and it doesn't have to be everyone because you cannot please everyone with your art. You know, you can just please a few. So yeah, that's I a think... quote I I found. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why. Um, so I don't know which movie came before Bao. But the reasons why people are so proud of Bao, um, so I, I I studied a bit in Sheridan College, which is where she is from. the The animator is from Canada, and she's she very very slightly put in Toronto where she lives, in that animation. So the the the, the charm you see is the streetcar in Toronto. Um, the background is the CN Tower. And the market is the Chinatown in Toronto, and you wouldn't notice this if you were not from Toronto. But everyone in my school and like everyone who watches this is like, "Yo, this is like Canada. Like no one would notice this unless you do it." And I think that's a beautiful thing about animation because you can do that, and you can also do it in other stuff that's not animation. <laughs> <laughs> like I do, I do it in planning all the time. Where I talk about like, hey, this is normal in our culture, like collaboration and all of that. You know, I don't know about you, Inga. <laughs> How do you do it in science? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how you would want me. I mean, I think the thing that you brought up about animation and setting is interesting because animation is not inherently set in one certain area, right? You have to build the setting. And one of the interesting ones was probably Big Hero Six. Oh my god! Oh yeah, I forgot about it. Because Big Hero Six, they essentially made their own fictional city, which was like San Francisco. It was like a strange mix between Japan and <laughs> San Francisco. San Francisco. San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, that that one is really nice too. Because like, if you're Asian, That's... you're like, this is Asia. <laughs> But then if you're American, you're like, this is America. Yeah, I can, this... I can still hear. <laughs> That movie was pretty good because it blended. There was so much research that was done into it. It was supposed to be a movie about robotics, and they did so much research into robotics, like soft robotics, which is what Baymax is based on, is a real thing. But when we're talking about San Francisco as a city setting, like that one's interesting. It's like not a real place, and yet they created it. I think that's that's like one of the cool things about yeah animation. I mean, I've always loved animation since I was a kid. Uh, like my first movie was uh, Finding Nemo, and I love it so much. So like ever since I was a kid, I o- I've always wanted to be in the film industry. Like I told you guys, right? As a musician, like that time was as a performer, now as a film scorer. So yeah, and like I've. Gain quite a lot of experience in animations, and I think it's just pretty cool, like how you can just draw. I know it's not just draw, but I mean, you can just create your virtual, your not virtual, your your imaginary world 
and mix mix and match stuff like how in Big Hero 6 it's like San Fran San Fran talk Tokyo it's like pretty cool so like yeah animation so cool yeah I I totally agree um like with the short that we're doing Kagati um but I mean it's set in Indonesia and we're trying to uh, like model the house like exterior and interior like use reference and stuff um and down to like <laughs> yeah down to the like the characters like like we have a grandpa character he has like a batik um headband and like sarung as well like those little details that we have to build because it's not the real world um that probably like you know international viewers like probably don't care but like hopefully indonesian like especially people will like notice and be like wow like our stuff is in an animation you know like that's like I feel like that's really cool to be able to do that. I think Mars and I discussed this previously and I feel like it's such an important point. It's that some people want to be seen on screen. Like they want to know, they want to see themselves represented on screen, especially children who didn't grow up in a certain country and they didn't like fully grow up in like a certain culture. For them, seeing themselves represented on screen is like a bigger deal deal like it's a really big deal even if it's animation wise so i think that it's really cool that you guys are doing that thank you yeah for sure that's that's really a good point yeah i mean the first animation i or like film that i really like feel i guess yeah did you guys watch american dragon it's not but like the first time it was kind of like the first time where I saw like, oh, there, there's an Asian culture. Asian. I was like, I this is Jake Long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jake Long. It's, it's not the first. <laughs> but this is the first one I thought about. Um, right, right, right. It's just a little details, you know. And uh, I think, I think it's really important what you said. You want people to take away watching your stories is that you're invested in the culture, or like, not even a culture. Sometimes it's like a different point and perspective that you might have taught us. Um, I think that's like really... The thing about animation right now is that it says a lot of things you cannot in a feature film because you can't imagine it in the paper and it's not like too much in your face. There's a lot of animation that tells you about, you know, history is, is written by the winners. Like, we all know that, but like kids don't know that. And I think learning that from an animation is very important because that teaches us that there's other ways you can show your culture and whatever is important to you and what do you want to tell like especially when you brought up um about like kids kids don't know like um when they're watching movies like cartoons like they probably don't realize how much time and effort and that goes <laughs> put into it you know they're like Ah, uh, cute, cute characters. Ah, uh, Mike Wazowski. <laughs> but like, I don't think it's just kids. It's sometimes like adults too, right? Like, oh, yeah, I think everyone. Yeah, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that, yeah, yeah, that's really true. Like, even adults, they probably don't like understand like how much we're against. Yeah, I, I guess people should appreciate I don't more. I think your parents. Know. Yeah, dude. Yeah, like, I mean, <laughs> uh yeah, I mean, my parents, um, I'm glad like they support me and everything and what I chose, like my career path. But I tried so hard to like, you know, sh- like educate them. Like, this is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, parents are a bit hard to like talk to, I guess. Um, but they, they know the general idea of what I'm doing. Just, yeah, I just wish they like understand more. <laughs> It takes Even like, time. like a funny story is so if you watch Umbrella Academy, there's a, there's a the Asian guy Ben, he, that was his few, first like feature role I guess, and he got into the Korean news in Korea, and that was the first time his parents are like, oh I'm so proud of you, look at this Korean news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa. I think I mean, it like, like, takes time honestly. Like, yeah. Um, for my parents, it was like. So I was into um, helping people, all, all that stuff. It was, I never told them I got an award in, in high school. I just kind of invited them like, yeah, go to my graduation. Nothing's gonna happen. And then, and then my name got called. And then my parents are like, oh, they, they were so slow, but then my, my mom had to be like, 
Dude, dude, that's your kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like it's just, it's just like we grew up all Asian, right? I think we will talk about it more later. Um, but it's so important that we have patience and kindness to ourselves that it will matter in the future, especially with something grueling as animation, or I guess science is kind of more. <laughs> um, science is important. Science, Science is very more, It's more visible, definitely. It's more visible than, like, uh, the slow stuff you do. Um, I mean, like, for, okay, for, like, anything art in general, it's it's just... <laughs> it's oh, hard definitely. work. Like, And it's important like, to point out that all of it is hard work. Because yeah, actually, I've seen people... Yeah. I've seen people undermine um, writers, uh, even though they're doing something alongside... Artist. Yeah, exactly. So like, it's it's all it's all like hard work. Like, I know for animation, like when when Stanley like sh- showed me some because he invited me to the work. We we have this workspace called in Slack, and then like I was just looking at all the chance like hmm. <laughs> that's a lot of work. <laughs> it's like the skeleton, the texture, skeleton, per frame, oh, yeah. <laughs> and everything, and then. You the know, because, rendering. Yeah, exactly. You know what? If you've ever seen it's like, the bloopers for Brave, those are hilarious. I, I mean, where like, like right? the skeleton yeah. doesn't move accordingly, and then the hair yeah. moves. The hair like right. explodes or something. And I mean, like Disney made a lot of uh, applications and softwares along the way. Like they keep developing new softwares to make the hair more flowy. I I, I think especially for Frozen Two, they yeah. made like a couple yeah. of new softwares. Just to make the make Elsa's hair flow better and the uh, and the elements move better, so yeah. And I think like animators have to do like a, a whole lot of research. Like I know for Frozen Two, they had to do horseback riding to understand the movement of the horse element. I think Stanley actually mentioned that we were supposed to have a trip <laughs> for like. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah, for like any that. animation project, I think it's like recommendable to like do research trip. Um, I read this like um, a book called Creative Inc. written by Ed Catmull, which is the president of Pixar and one of the co-founder. And I think they were the ones to like initiate research trips like before even like production. Because like sometimes, you know, artists will like... Uh, Draw, draw mountains like that and they can draw it well but um, if they have like been to a specific location with mountains and like you know it's it hits different I guess like being immersed in the environment and you'll notice things that you don't know before and yeah. so research is definitely a really good <laughs> process yeah. stage yeah, yeah especially I mean, like, when you're from the culture you can, you can tell when something's wrong <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is what we're kind of afraid for. I mean, Pugatti. yeah. I mean, don't be afraid. Like people were gonna like have sticks because, like, you know, there there is no Southeast Asian representation. I mean, like, to begin with. when um, like I talked to Stanley about the sound, like he he told me to buy kites. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I used to I used, used to, to play kites, honestly. No, because I've never played kite. Oh really? I'm writing. I'm writing. What? I'm making the sound design for a kite movie, and I've never played kites. No, you you should you should. I played kites when I was younger. But anyway, under right? The- yeah, I didn't play that often, but I I feel like I played once or twice. Really? And I think you should try. It's interesting yeah. that you brought up Elsa as like a point for Pixar to start developing. Um, software. I would have thought that they developed it back in Brave because oh, I don't know yeah. if you've ever seen the behind the scenes for that one, but her hair. I, I, seen it, yeah. hair they, I think they draw Persian. Frozen's not Pixar, by the way. Frozen oh, is just Disney. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Oh. I think Pixar might have had their own stuff already done <laughs> and then they just refused to share Yeah, with Pixar Disney. is like. Yeah. I feel like. I, feel I like think that's like one thing. Um, oh, sorry. No, no, no. You, you first, it's fine. Yeah, um, I really like um, that you brought up about like um, like technology and how they make like softwares that simulate hair and stuff. Because that's also another thing that um, that is why I really want to pursue like three D animation, not just like two D animation in general. Because 
um, like with 3D, I feel like it's like like the stereotypes of like animators only draw. Like it's not it doesn't exist in 3D because while we still have to have like good knowledge of drawing, but it's more using a technical application, like if that makes sense. So like it's literally like blending um, arts and science and like technology and like creativity um, because we need to know like also like how like things fall like gravity we know we need to know physics and how things move and stuff but at the same time like for the technical for the, like technology like this the hair simulation and stuff they use maths a lot and like physics and maths are like the core of this like 3d animation software which again i'm pretty sure like people don't know that <laughs> like not a lot of people know that and yeah i mean, like it's such a pity that they like only view um like these movies as just like uh, a creative work like an, an art piece instead of like it's actually involving science and and a whole lot of other things so that's actually a great point yeah i'm mean. thinking about like big hero six where they had a lot of like researcher because <laughs> you know when when what's his name the brother was creating the Baymax. Tadashi. Oh yeah. Tadashi. There was, there was there was a lot of research that went into it, like what would a healthcare profession that's like a robot would look like. Oh that's like cool. there's have you seen the credits just like science research? <laughs> it's a lot of like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Baymax is based on real life science. It was like okay the software is not there but the hardware kind of is. It's called soft oh. soft robotics and it's being developed in Carnegie Mellon. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah! It was a Carney. the The university was based on Carnegie Mellon, if I'm not mistaken. Like, the, oh, that's so cool! Yeah, like the healthcare role. Of, yeah. Uh, like, mm-hmm, yeah, that's good to yeah. know. Yeah. So and I then don't... when when Hero, yeah, when Hero went into the lab, all those science, like technically, it's like bending the rules about what already exists and what doesn't already exist. For sure. <laughs> And I feel like a lot of scientists probably sat at home like, no, someone's gonna ask me to make this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there was still imagination in it, but it did, there was a lot of background research um, to it. I mean, everything in the movie field, you need research. Like, you just need a lot of research. Like, yeah, the animators yeah. need research. Sound designers, music, music, uh, music composers. Like, even I... I mean, I made... A lot of quite a lot of gamelan music but still because it's a different area right like we said like indonesia is a big area different gamelan different instruments so they have yeah. gamelan in sulawesi by the way i just yeah. I didn't realize that <laughs> exactly yeah, so like the type so it, cool. it's different too <laughs> so, one one minute panic <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah i was like wait <laughs> no no, because the reason is like um, in Singapore, which is like my senior high school, um, I also like uh, played gamelan. Like we had an ensemble gamelan, mm-hmm. but it's uh, the Balinese gamelan. And uh, I see. that's really interesting because like, yeah, I think that's like when the first time I really learned to appreciate my culture, like Indonesia in, in general, because it's such an ironic thing, like, uh, the first time I ever touch and play gamelan is actually like miles away from Indonesia. Like it's not even in my country that I learn my culture. Not, I think not, not ironic at all. A lot of people. Not ironic. Like, yeah, like, I bet like people, other people. Oh, um, a lot of people. What's it called? Um, realize their like love for culture like when they are like far away from their culture. Yeah. I mean, good, me, yeah. For me, it's like I learned the saman dance for like. Uh, I think it was like an international conference. We were like, oh, this is so tiring. Like, why are we doing this? <laughs> but yeah. then when we were there, we were performing. So many claps. They're like, this is so like cool. Like, what are you guys right. doing? This, this? And I were like, oh, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, no, it's totally normal. Yeah. So that's pretty much like all the time that we have. Thank you so much, Stanley, for coming on. Yeah. Thank, thank you. No, thank you for having me. Yeah. Stay tuned next week for another episode. We're going to have another one of the co-creators of the movie that they're going to make. Yeah. yeah, Thank you for listening, guys. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Hello, hi. Thank you for listening to the Peak Boredom Podcast. This is Mars and Inga signing off, and don't forget to tune in next week. Please, bye. Also, happy holidays. I hope you like, um, yeah, you know, the few episodes we have left. See you.